A leading U.S. senator on African affairs says President Emerson Mnangagwa is running out of time to take steps which could lead to sanctions relief for Zimbabwe. Senator Chris Coons led a delegation to the country early this month. He was encouraged by Mnangagwa's commitments to the elections planned for this July. Our Washington correspondent Daniel Renches has been speaking to Senator Coons about his trip to Zimbabwe. Well, I was honored to have a chance to lead a bipartisan delegation of five U.S. senators uh, we visited Zimbabwe. We had terrific conversations uh, with President Nangagwa and his vice president and a couple of members of his cabinet, uh, as well as with opposition leaders uh, and um, civil society and NGO leaders who are active uh, in the election space. The United States, uh, and as well as the United Kingdom and a number of other countries, uh, have long had sanctions in place against Zimbabwe. Uh, those sanctions are complex and have several different sources. Uh, but Senator Flake and I uh, have introduced a bill uh, and recently uh, revised that bill um, that would provide some sanctions relief for Zimbabwe. It's not our role to dictate exactly what it is the Zimbabwean people will do through their elected leadership, um, but this sets out a couple of steps that they should take. President Mnangagwa, uh, both in our personal meeting, which was positive and terrific and very long, uh, and in public statements, uh, both in the press conference afterwards uh, and in an editorial published in the New York Times, has committed himself to democracy, uh, towards free and fair elections, towards respecting human rights, towards returning uh, to a rules-based open economy. If he takes those steps, significant sanctions relief should be forthcoming from the United States, and Senator Flake and I would take the actions necessary uh, in the American Congress to accomplish that. Um, but frankly, after what was a very encouraging initial meeting several weeks ago, we've seen no concrete steps in response. Uh, the amount of time left before the elections uh, is shrinking, and so the importance of taking prompt, concrete steps to demonstrate uh, the president's commitment to democracy is becoming more and more important. So your, your confidence in that commitment is declining? Well, there's less and less time uh, for the president to take concrete action. Uh, it's been wonderful to hear his encouraging uh, public and private comments about uh, welcoming international observers, about publishing the list uh, of those who are enrolled for the vote, of identifying the list of uh, places uh, where polling will take place, of providing access to state media for opposition candidates, a whole variety of things that are uh, basic indicators of free and fair elections. Uh, but no steps have been taken yet, at least that I'm aware of. There have been some encouraging initial meetings with opposition parties but no concrete steps. So uh, whether you look at EU standards, AU standards, SADC standards, there are standards for free and fair elections that don't vary significantly. I just urge President Nangagwa and his administration to take concrete steps soon. So the prospects, though, of lifting sanctions, what effect do you think that would have on Zimbabwe and maybe some other steps taken by European partners? What, what would that do to Zimbabwe. Relieving sanctions uh, would provide significant economic lift uh, for Zimbabwe, both because it would then uh, encourage foreign direct investment, uh, re-establishment of robust economic ties, and it would bring engagement with the Western world for Zimbabwe, which has really been an increasingly isolated, uh, challenged, and impoverished country uh, over uh, the decades uh, of uh, former President Mugabe's rule. So do you think the U.S. is primed, is ready, is capable of providing the sort of impetus that Zimbabwe needs to sort of revive a long dormant economic potential? Uh, I think Zimbabwe is widely recognized as a country uh, with terrific potential. It's got um, a wonderful um, human resources in terms of very well-educated um, citizenry. Um, it's got a legacy uh, of uh, infrastructure and of development and of agricultural potential. It's got great uh, natural resources as well. Uh, and I think they would find uh, interested partners from all around the world uh, that would gladly come and invest in their development and their re-engagement with the region. Uh, but as long as there are significant sanctions in place by Western countries on Zimbabwe, um, that raises both direct and indirect um, challenges for them. Um, indirectly, it just raises the question, is this an economy um, where you could ever get your investment back out, where rule of law would be respected, where the courts are fair, and uh, where the Constitution will be followed? Um, but it also directly uh, makes it harder for them to access capital and harder for them to uh, attract uh, the sort of interest and engagement that would revive um, the Zimbabwean economy.